What's going on everybody and welcome back to another what if on our channel. More importantly, welcome back to an MCU what if. You guys already read the title. Let's get this story going. In the climax of the final battle between T'Challa, the Black Panther, and Killmonger, the two go blow for blow. And T'Challa even with the aid of his suit against Killmonger was still falling behind. T'Challa would have to make a risky move with the Vibranium Train, which would open up points for both himself and Killmonger. T'Challa would be pushed to the edge by Killmonger, but after a desperate maneuver, T'Challa becomes victorious by plunging Killmonger's own blade into his base. Coming close to death, Killmonger requests one more thing, knowing of his defeat. He wishes to see the sun like his father had described it to him. In an act of mercy, T'Challa brings him to watch the beautiful sunset of Wakanda, and this brings Killmonger to tears. It's beautiful. I wish my father was able to show me this. My cousin, it's not too late for you. It was because of our own family's failures that we're both here. I can help you rediscover what life brings before you take your own. Eric would be beyond surprised to hear this from his cousin, even after defeating and almost killing him. Killmonger would ask, why? After he's caused so much pain, why would T'Challa help him? T'Challa would reply saying he has been misguided and fueled on hatred, but if he allows him to help, he can make sure his cousin lives with joy and prosperity. Killmonger would then look towards the sky, then towards his blade as he would be conflicted. But he was dying. Killmonger would reach for his blade to take it out, believing bondage was worse than life, but he would then collapse. Eric would then awaken in a field that appeared to be heaven, where he would find his father and his uncle. And Jobu would walk up to his son with Killmonger just staying still contemplating his, pla his past actions and the last time he saw his father in the living world. And Jobu then calls to his son, trying to capture his attention with that effort coming out as worthless. So he walks up to his son and holds his hands. He then calls for his son once again, with Eric looking up this time. Father, how did I mess up? I had it all. The mantle, the respect, the loyalty, but yet, I lost. My son... You never lost. I did. I failed you since the day you were born. I messed up when I betrayed my family, and family is all we have left. Then why was it our own family that got you killed? Me killed? If that never would have happened, and Wakanda helped people, there would be peace. Why don't they understand that? That was my mistake. Peace is not created by hate, but hope. Hoping that we could strive towards a better day. My son, you have the opportunity to bring peace. You have the right heart, but allow your cousin to open your mind to more than just violence and hate, to hope. Killmonger then sheds one last tear as his father hugs his son saying, I love you son, good luck. Killmonger then reaches to hug his father back until he wakes up once again in a panicked manner as he looks around his surroundings. He looks around to see many people around him that must have been healing his wounds. Killmonger then feels his chest where the blade had last been plunged with it showing a large scar. What the hell is going on here? After yelling out, Killmonger feels a very sharp pain in his base and falls to his knee. A lady then walks over and cautiously gives Killmonger water with him drinking the bottle till there's no more left. Killmonger then looks up seeing his healers look upon him in fear and he calms himself down. Killmonger would then ask where he is, with one lady stepping into the hut, saying he's in an isolated village, not too far from Wakanda's main headquarters. Killmonger then focuses his sight, and recognizes that the lady is his cousin, Shuri. Why am I alive? What kind of prison is this? Overlax, oh, you're lucky it's not a cell on the raft with those other Americans. You've been out for some time, and after my brother had stuck his neck out for you, they decided that instead of caging you, they will place you in a rehabilitative location like that other guy. Killmonger then whispers under his breath, asking about other guy, and Shuri then tells the servants that they can go. Shuri then gestures Eric to take a seat, as she begins to explain. After T'Challa saved Killmonger, he would go on to share Wakanda's resources with the world and to come out of the shadows, and this intrigues Eric, with him asking what the king is doing now. Shuri responds that T'Challa is currently busy, and Killmonger has been given a choice to refresh himself. Shuri then tells Killmonger that he has six months to fix up his act, and that if he doesn't, 
The raft isn't the worst place he will go to. Before leaving, Shuri reminds Eric that if he gets any ideas on recreating his plans, she's more than happy to place that blade right back where it was. Shuri then leaves with Killmonger then being left there stunned. He's proud of his cousin for helping the world, but confused on why he allowed him to live. His father knew that he would survive, and now he's going to have to try to figure out how to replace hatred with hope. For his extended time during the six months, Killmonger would have to support the village he's been placed in and help them prosper, and if he didn't, well, I think I already made it obvious that he would be in some trouble. As Killmonger would continue to help the people of his village, he would get short reminders of what life truly brings as helping the people when they couldn't achieve something had brought some clearance to him. Unfortunately for Killmonger, the whole country would be on edge with him still being alive, but the child would quell his people's anger and reassure them on Killmonger's status. Killmonger would still have the powers of the heart-shaped herb inside of him, making him have super strength, which would help him in his efforts on, to work. On occasion and on safe conditions, T'Challa would come to visit his cousin, with most of his visits resulting into the cousins getting into heated arguments, but nothing violent. Eric's time of rehabilitation would almost be over, until one day, T'Challa comes to him for aid. I wonder how pissed the princess will be when she finds out that you came to me for help. Oh, she's pissed, but that's not her biggest worry. T'Challa would then tell Killmonger that the planet is going to war against an enemy threat from space and that they could use all the help that they can get. Killmonger would ask why not get the billion dollar playboy to get the Avengers, but T'Challa would tell Eric that Iron Man is no longer on the planet and that Earth is vulnerable. Killmonger would finally take in the weight of the situation and agrees to help on one condition. On the other side of the globe, Steve Rogers and the remaining Avengers, who had gone to hiding to help Steve, had gathered together at Avengers HQ by the request of Banner. Banner would feel sorry for his friends having to hide away from the government and what it made them become. But now wasn't the time to be sorry. Now was the time to get the Mind Stone out of Vision's head after the captain agrees saying that we don't trade lives, we save them. The team would then head to Wakanda, where they would come across Bucky Barnes and a suited up Killmonger. Sam and Rhodey become hesitant to see Killmonger, with Steve being confused, but Widow tells Steve about who Killmonger is, and that S.H.I.E.L.D. had never managed to track the murderer down. Sam would even comment that this guy tried to overthrow and more importantly kill T'Challa, so why is he here? T'Challa then calms the group down, saying that Killmonger is just like everyone else and deserves redemption, with Killmonger laughing as he senses their fear. It's okay, cuz. They're okay to be afraid. Hoping that your fear doesn't scare you from the battle. This aggravates Sam and Rhodey, but Steve tells them to stand down and relax. We're on the same side. For now. The group would then head to Shuri, and Shuri would plan to remove the Mind Stone from Vision, but would say that it's going to take some time. Killmonger would then interject, saying that Bruce should stay with Shuri to help her out, as if he stays, they can remove the stone faster, and time isn't exactly on their side. The group would be surprised seeing that Killmonger actually is being helpful, but then disappointed after Killmonger remarks that if the Doctor can't reach the Green Beast, of Rage, then he's pointless in the battlefield. Even if he has some Stark tech, T'Challa agrees saying Bruce can do more good helping Shuri than risking his life on the field. Bruce reluctantly agrees out of annoyance as he really wanted to use the whole cluster. They would find themselves out of time as Thanos' warship would arrive with Proxima Midnight, Cole Obsidian, and Corvus Glaive, who would be lurking in the shadows. T'Challa would confront them, saying that the only thing their boss will be getting is dust and blood but Midnight remarks saying that they have blood to spare. They would set back up, with them watching the Outriders push savagely onto the force field, even killing themselves. Killmonger would notice how the Outriders would begin to loop around the force field, and would tell T'Challa that they need to take the battle head on. T'Challa would then lower the shields, and would command his army to charge. T'Challa and Steve would take front, as Killmonger would come up behind them, and the two forces would clash. Killmonger would utilize the claws and kinetic energy from his suit to take out the Outriders and would assist in the battle by aggressively and strategically killing off the Outriders. 
T'Challa would be getting overrun by Outriders, with him being thrown around until Killmonger joins him. Killmonger then helps T'Challa up, asking, Getting tired already, cuz? I'll save it. T'Challa and Killmonger would then coordinate attack after attack, as they would have each other's back. As an Outrider would pounce toward T'Challa, Killmonger would slash the beast, as T'Challa would defend his cousin. They begin to be overwhelmed, with Killmonger saying he's got an idea, with T'Challa saying he's way ahead of him. The two then gather up as much kinetic energy as they can, and as a large horde of Outriders go to attack, they clash their fists against each other, which creates a large kinetic wave, and kills many Outriders. Killmonger would then look up, seeing many more Outriders on their way, and would also see how his teammates were being thrown around. Killmonger would look towards his cousin in shock, but the child would give his cousin a hopeful nod, as he would open up his claws once again, ready to risk his life to save his world. Before another Outrider would arrive, a large beam of light opens up as the God of Thunder Thor would arrive with the two Guardians, Rocket and Groot. With the help of Thor, the tide of the battle is turned. Thor would join his comrades in the battle as he would destroy hordes and hordes of Outriders, with Proxima then unleashing the gigantic Thresher Blades. Killmonger would be close to becoming a victim of the blade's rush until Wanda comes down from her post and blocks the blade. Killmonger would shout at Wanda, saying she needs to get back to Vision as he's now vulnerable. Wanda would then comment saying, how's he going to be vulnerable when he's helping them? Killmonger would be confused until he looks up to see Vision and Hulkbuster emerging. Thanks to the help of Bruce, Shuri would have been able to replace the Mind Stone with an arc reactor and Wanda would be able to destroy the Mind Stone. Vision and Bruce would then help support the battle, with Corvus Glaive joining the battle on the ground, as he wouldn't be able to retrieve the, time the Mind Stone. Glaive would tell Proxima that they need to retreat, but before they go any further, Vision comes around to get some payback. With the additional support, the heroes are soon enough able to push back the Outriders, with the battle seeming like it's reached its end, until everyone gets an unsettling feeling. The burst and screams of violence seems to become mute as Thanos emerges from his portal, showing that he has attained the time stone from Doctor Strange. Bruce would then remark that Thanos has arrived, with Thanos sensing that something has happened to the stone. Vision would then land down, telling Thanos that the battle is over. The Mind Stone has been destroyed. The Mind Stone has been destroyed. You have lost. Thanos then looks down, but then right back up as he replies with a, Have I? They all look confused, with that unsettling feeling resurfacing, with Steve telling them all to keep their eyes up and sharp. Thanos continues to walk forward towards the group, with everyone trying to attack the Mad Titan, but it all comes out as useless. Even with the might of Wanda's magic, it isn't enough to defeat Thanos, as he continues his walk towards Vision. Vision is confused, until Thanos begins to rewind time on Vision, and summon forth the Mind Stone. Wanda then calls out in anger, no, but it's too late, as Thanos takes hold of a full-powered Infinity Gauntlet. Before Thanos is able to snap, Thor tries to make one last effort, but Thor slips up, and this allows Thanos to snap. In a different realm, Thanos places his hand over where his wound had gone and looks up to see his daughter Gamora. In a last bit of confession, Thanos reveals that it cost everything to reach his end game, to reach his end goal. Thanos would then wake back up in reality as the Infinity Gauntlet would be burnt out with Thor panicking, demanding to know what he did. Before another moment passes, Thanos escapes through a portal as a sound of dread courses through all their minds. Eric would have witnessed the snap and would have looked on confused, asking what happened with Thor being lost of words. Steve would also ask what happened with Thor staying silent as the victims of the snap would make themselves known as Steve's own friend Bucky would fall into a pile of dust. Killmonger would watch as his teammates would disappear like flies and witness the death of his own cousin once again. They have lost, and Killmonger is stunned, waiting to find out what is in store for him, life or death.
Thank you guys so much for watching the video. And if you guys enjoyed, please, please, please hit a fat like, hit a fat sub, and hit a fat notifications. This video took a while mainly because of this new editing process I did. Plus, um, there aren't really a lot of MCU uh, renders out there, so you kind of got to make your own. Now, is this the end of Killmonger, or is this only the beginning of his story? This time, you decide. I'm going to give this video a bit of time, but leave a comment in the comments section stating whether he survives the snap or he's a victim of the snap. With that out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching the video, and until next time, later!